In this lesson, we study the distribution of sample proportions. For example, suppose the true proportion of voters planning to vote for a particular candidate is 0.62. Of course, it's not very easy to obtain this fact, and we would try to approximate this proportion by conducting polls. If we interviewed 100 people and found that 70 of them supported the candidate, then we could compute the sample proportion by taking 70 divided by 100 to obtain 0 0.7. We could repeat this process for multiple polls and of course we would not expect the results to be the same each time. The distribution of sample proportions is shown in the histogram on the right and as you can see the distribution is centered at the true proportion of 0.62 but about half of the sample proportions are less than this and the other half are more than this. It's interesting to see what happens if we increase the sample size. As you can see in the distribution on the right, as the sample size increases, the distribution becomes narrower. This is due to the fact that small samples vary a lot, but large samples have less variation and are much closer together. This is not surprising if you had very small groups you would expect to have wide variation between those groups. On the other hand, if you had very large groups, you would expect there to be less variation between the groups. All this behavior can be summarized in the central limit theorem for proportions, which states that the distribution of sample proportions is normally distributed with a mean p equal to the true proportion and a standard deviation given by the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. Although I did not derive this formula or show you where it comes from, you can see that it agrees with the animation shown to the right. In the denominator, we see n, which represents the sample size. If the sample size is large, this makes the fraction small, which makes the standard deviation small, producing a narrower distribution. So the larger samples have less variation and result in a smaller standard deviation. We're now ready to move on to an example where we apply the central limit theorem for proportions. In football, pass completion is defined as the percentage of forward passes caught inbounds by an eligible receiver. Peyton Manning has a career pass completion percentage of 65.2% and in a typical season makes approximately 556 passing attempts. For part A, in any given season, what is the probability that Peyton will maintain a pass completion rate of greater than 68 percent? The central limit theorem for proportions states that the sample proportions have a normal distribution with a mean P equal to 0.652 which is Peyton Manning's career pass completion rate and a standard deviation given by the square root of P times 1 minus P divided by N where P is the true proportion and N is the sample size. The square root of the true proportion 0.652 times 1 minus 0.652 all divided by the sample size of 556. We can put this into a calculator to obtain 0 0.0202. We can sketch the normal distribution involved here, which is centered at 0.652. And we want to know what Peyton's chances are of obtaining a pass completion rate of above 0.68. So how likely is it that he can perform this much above average? To find out, we open the normal distribution calculator, enter the mean, 0 0.652, enter the standard deviation, 0 0.0202, change the symbol to greater than, enter the percentage of interest, 0.68, and press compute. And we come out with 0 0.0828. This means that Peyton Manning has about an 8.2% chance 
of performing this much above average for one season. We can now move on to part B, which is very similar. The primary difference is that the sample size is different. What is the probability that Peyton can maintain a pass completion above 68% for two consecutive seasons? Well, in two consecutive seasons, he's going to make 556 times 2, or 1,112 attempts. Now, the mean is going to stay the same at 0.652. The standard deviation is again computed using square root p1 minus p divided by n. Square root 0.652 times 1 minus 0.652 all divided by our new larger sample size of 1112. And this gives a new standard deviation of 0.014. 284 and after we evaluate the expression on our calculator. We can then re-sketch the normal distribution which is going to be a little bit narrower this time. It's still centered at 0.652 and then we can calculate Peyton Manning's chances of having a pass completion rate of greater than 68 percent. Again open the probability calculator, change the standard deviation, 0.014284, press compute, and we obtain 0 0.0249. This means that Peyton Manning has about a 2.49% chance of maintaining a pass completion rate of 68% for two consecutive seasons. In part C, we're asked why this probability decreased. The probability decreased because it's harder to maintain an above average performance for two consecutive seasons. 